science and comic book heroes have had a rocky relationship since the beginning. Superhero stories are a form of science fiction, generally speaking, leaning harder on the fiction than the science. The MCU is no different in this regard. Tony Stark is one of the MCU's science bros with no powers of his own except his engineering brilliance and limitless resources. To get there, Tony's had to make a few bends around current science, so let's take a look at a few, huh? Repulsor Ray. What would Iron Man be without his signature repulsors that he's able to fire out of his palms and his chest? It's one of the two signature aspects of the Iron Man armor that make Iron Man Iron Man. In the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the repulsors are meant to be both an energy projection device and a plasma weapon. The idea is that they suck in air from around the suit and turn electrons into muons, which are like electrons, just heavier. The closest we have to that in real life is a project in the 90s called Marauder, or Magnetically Accelerated Ring to Achieve Ultra-High Directed Energy and Radiation. The Marauder was an orbital plasma railgun project that became secret in 1995. Wait a minute, what are they not telling us? While at that time they may have shrunk the tech down to a glove, we have to chalk the repulsor ray up to Tony Stark as a genius. Chest Cavity one of the defining elements of Tony Stark is the arc reactor in his chest that powers his suit and keeps him alive. This is done by a not-so-small cylinder dead in the center of his chest, right where all the really valuable organs usually are, including the heart. Most of Tony's major organs would have to have been displaced in order to make room for his arc reactor. This is no small feat. Your internal organs aren't just a trunk of luggage. You can't just rearrange things. Ho Yinsen had to sort all of that out in a cave while he was held captive. Fortunately for Stark in the MCU, Yinsen is also a genius. While we might not know of any of the methods he used to rearrange the organs, two comic book level super geniuses can find a way to sort it out. Literally. Nanotech. In Infinity War, Stark has gotten on that nanotechnology bandwagon with his new Mark 50 armor. Now his former arc reactor chest piece can house his entire suit, which can change into anything he needs it to be. But what even is nanotechnology, right? Well, strictly speaking, it's the manipulation of matter between 1 and 100 nanometers, which is like really, really small. Technically a billionth of a meter or almost the entire size of a helium atom. Getting that small was a plot point in both the Ant-Man movies where Janet Van Dyne was lost for decades in the quantum realm. Nanotech doesn't address the other pervasive issue though, the conservation of mass. That's a complicated rule which states that you can't add or subtract matter without it coming from somewhere. While Iron Man's Mark 50 armor seems to ignore that concept, creating new bits out of seemingly thin air, remember that his dad's chief rival put his name on a particle that could shrink and grow things. Aerodynamics. The concept that keeps giant vehicles from falling from the sky is lift. The simple explanation is that lift is created by creating a surface where air goes faster over one part of the wing than it does over the other, creating pressure. It's a principle that was used on sailing ships when the shape of the sails would make wind go around the sails in a way that would create pull. The problem with heavier than air flight wasn't lift, but propulsion. The Wright brothers had finally found a strong enough motor to push the craft fast enough to provide the lift. So what does this all have to do with Iron Man? Well, once he's flying flat, there's nothing to provide any lift. At this point, he's little more than an unguided missile. Of course, in that first epic reveal of the Iron Man armor, you see all the plates flex and move. Perhaps the genius Tony Stark has managed to form an AI that uses those flaps to correct his flight. Blunt trauma. The primary purpose of armor since the beginning has been to protect the person inside from getting hurt. The size and nature of that armor has changed over time, and the more armor, the more protection. That is, until the weapons got better. Then all that clanky metal became more of a burden than a help. So armor evolved to adapt to more modern technology, now meant to protect people from explosions and projectiles. One of the things that the regular soldier doesn't face that the superhero does is the super-powered punch. The super punch is a staple of a superhero fight. 
What would the superhero fight be without the participants being punched through walls? Even regular real-world armor doesn't completely dissipate the force of projectiles, they just keep them from piercing. The person wearing it still gets knocked down. When that happens, the blunt force can cause bruised organs or broken bones. With the kind of blows that Iron Man receives from the likes of Thor, Ultron, and Thanos, he doesn't have anything to protect him from the force of those punches. Man, he really gets hit a lot. On top of that, Iron Man makes some hairpin turns at high speeds, creating G-forces that knock most people out. Fighter pilots and astronauts use pressure suits to counteract these forces. Tony Stark would have had to improve on that drastically to survive the hits that he takes. Nero Lynx Iron Man's suit makes a lot of decisions in real time while Tony Stark is out on the world privatizing world peace. In the real world, we're just now starting to get suits that amplify the strength of the wearer. While no one appears to be fighting crime with them or defending the Earth from alien invasions, they're being used to assist people who've lost the use of their limbs or strength within them. The control for all of these is in a variety of inputs, whether it's pushing buttons or flexing different muscles. Iron Man needs to do a lot more than just control his suit to pick things up and walk. He's also flying, shooting his various weapons, changing systems, and whatever else comes up. For some of those controls, he has voice commands, but for most of his controls, they'd have to be as he thinks of it. It's another field in which the genius billionaire playboy philanthropist would have had to make his own advancements. Arc Reactor The other half of Tony Stark's signature technology that makes up the Iron Man armor is the Arc Reactor. Originally housed in his chest, the diminutive power supply is capable of producing enough power to operate all of the tech, including the power sapping repulsors while Tony Stark flies to the rescue. The arc reactor isn't actually an invention of Tony Stark though, but rather his father, Howard Stark. Howard Stark's reaction was a much bigger affair, used to power both the Stark Industry Complex and the Avengers Tower. Tony's big achievement is shrinking it down to a chest size unit to power his Iron Man armor. The basic idea of the arc reactor is it's just a particular approach to fusion power. Currently, nuclear power comes from fission, which is the breaking apart of atoms, but fusion is putting new ones together from other ones. It's what the sun does. What, that doesn't help? I know, nuclear physics is hard. Fortunately for Tony Stark in the MCU, Tony has the head start of his father's work to build on in order to work it out. Plus, his dad hit a particle in an expo map, so there's that. Charging. We've all been waiting for that hammer-shaped charger that could boost up our phones with a single blow. Iron Man got just that when he met the mighty Thor for the first time ever. Tony, Steve Rogers, and Natasha Romanoff had just captured Thor's brother Loki and were taking him back to S.H.I.E.L.D. Thor showed up to take his brother back to Asgard and, well, you saw it. The Thor and Iron Man fight in the forest was amazing. There was the key moment where Thor let old Shellhead know what he was the god of by hitting him with a solid bolt of lightning. This turns out to be a tide turner as Iron Man's armor is then charged up by 400%. Unfortunately, batteries have to have a steady regulated input of power to charge up and most electronics are actually controlled by distributing a specific amount of electricity. Any less and it wouldn't work and any more it would short out. Space management. One of the best things about Iron Man is the tricks that are lurking under the armor. Who didn't enjoy the forearm mounted rocket taking out the tank that had the audacity of firing at our favorite Avenger, huh? Tony Stark tends to not allow himself to be beaten by the same tricks twice, but that means that each time he comes up with a new fix, he has to add more to his suit of armor. As a constant tinkerer, he's constantly making revisions and improvements to his armor as well as his special suits. The problem becomes, where do you put all of that stuff? Going back to the rocket launcher in the forearm, a large part of the gauntlet has to be dedicated to holding the rocket, leaving little room for his actual arm, much less the rest of the controls like the repulsors in his palm. This, of course, is why a lot of these things tend to only get used once, and a clever engineer, especially for science bros, would be particularly good at space management. Magnets. The whole story of how Tony Stark ended up with the arc reactor in his chest and the eventual Iron Man armor in the first place starts with simple magnets. In the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Tony Stark took shrapnel to the chest during an attack by the Ten Rings. The Ten Rings had captured Stark to build them their own Jericho bomb, but first, Ho Yin Sin had to keep the shrapnel from reaching Tony's heart. 
This is true from the comics as well. At first, Tony got the shrapnel in Vietnam, and later it was retconned to more modern wars. No matter where or when the story takes place, shrapnel heading for Tony's heart is the end result, and the magnet that keeps them from doing that is the answer. Tony would have to manage a lot of elements to make an Iron Man suit, and regulating the magnetic output would probably be the smallest item on that list. And those are just some of the ways that Tony manages to bend science as we know it. What's your favorite bit of stark speculative tech or your best guess as to how he solved it in the first place? Let us know in the comment section. And while you're there, why not subscribe to CBR for more MCU videos? As always, thanks for watching.